I am not a psychiatrist. Please do not take my word over that of a mental health professional. I just wanted to get that out of the way because in terms of animated films that deal with grief, mental health, or just emotions in general, Wonder Park is one that majorly misses the target. And here's the thing, it did not have to be this way. Wonder Park is a terrible animated movie that had the potential to be one of the best animated films of all time. And something like that kind of pisses me off more than, say, Mars Needs Mom's ugliness, Cars 2's stupidity, or Chicken Little's mean-spiritedness. And while I think all of those movies are a lot worse than this one, I hate Wonder Park a lot more. Wonder Park is a Nickelodeon film made out to be a pilot of a cartoon show that may or may not still be in production because this movie performs so badly. And it's become one of those mean bad movies. You've probably heard how it goes before. Happy-go-lucky wild quirky comedy. Oh my god, I'm dying of cancer! Back to the good quirky fun times in this colorful animated world. Yeah, like The Room or Christmas with the Cranks. Mostly. So, the movie begins and we're introduced to an imaginative girl named June, who pulled a Phineas and Ferb and built a roller coaster in her backyard. When this nearly gets her killed, her mother decides to help her build an imaginary park that can go even more over the top called... No, it's called Wonderland. This is never going to not be annoying, but yes. The park in the movie called Wonder Park is called Wonderland. Out of nowhere, and I do mean out of nowhere, June's mother gets sick. So sick that she needs to go away to a specialty doctor. People like to joke or they're misinformed that it's cancer, but the disease is never actually named in the movie. Although I will have to say it's probably not cancer because... Okay. This is one of those movies where I need to talk about the ending immediately because it literally destroys the movie. So if you're one of the six people who give a shit, this is your spoiler warning. Mom's not dead. This isn't the only problem with the movie, it's just one that ruins anything good this film had going for it. Throughout the entire film, June's mother is alive. She comes back home at the end of the film completely recovered. This is why I'm pretty sure the disease isn't cancer. She doesn't show any signs of going through any sort of treatment. So we're just gonna call it unspecified drama disease. People have been complaining about animated films killing parents for arbitrary reasons for a very long time now. Me included. So, why do I have a problem with this? Oh, I don't know. It's just that the entire movie is written like June's mother passed away. And much of the film is focused around the themes of grief and loss. As you can imagine, this causes so many problems with every aspect of the film. It destroys the message, the story, the characters, the pacing, the tone. This must have been a last-minute decision based on some network hackery, because nothing good comes out of this half-assed happy ending. Let's start with basic logic here. To be as clear as I can, June's mom may be sick, but she's not beyond conversation. We put Wonderland away. Well, that's a shame. I told your mom just yesterday we'd help you build it. One of the only lines mentioning June's mother is alive, by the way, after she goes away. For the first act of this film, June is going through some heavy grief, even thinking that what happened to her mother is somehow her fault. And she's developing what looks like the beginnings of obsessive compulsive disorder. So I have to ask, did anyone take this child aside and maybe, you know, talk to her? June is having angry outbursts, shutting herself away from former friends, throwing anything that reminds her of her mother or Wonderland in the fire. But her mother is alive and is able to communicate. Shouldn't she be talking to her daughter? The kind of mother that she's written as would be on the phone every day that she could with June. But no, we see a phone call to her mother once and that's it for the entire film. And sure, June probably would not tell her mother about putting Wonderland away. But that's where her father should step in and talk about how June has really been feeling and behaving. But no. Tomorrow is math camp. And I know it's important to clean an already clean house. <laughs> Why don't you channel some of this nervous energy into packing? His solution to June's mental strife is to make sure that she goes to math camp. The way that it's written is that both June and her father haven't even spoken to her mother since she left. Because it is written like she was dead the whole time. Which completely changes the context of the movie and makes June's father look like a bit of an asshole. And we'll go visit, honey. It's not written like they've ever gone to visit. Take out that one line and the one about June's aunt talking to her mother and every single member of the audience would intrinsically know that the mother is dead. The fact that June's mother has been alive the whole time throughout the film really does throw a wrench into anything that the movie tries to do. To be fair, it's not unbelievable for June to be acting the way she is. But the fact that the mom is alive and, you know, might want to talk to June about the thing that they've connected over makes things play out a hell of a lot differently. Speaking of playing out differently... I'm okay now, Junebug. 
Oh, that's nice. These two wonderful parents never told June that her mother was on her way to recovery. Like, that's what this quote-unquote happy ending is implying. That despite June being so grief-stricken that she seemed to be struggling with mental illness, these two parents didn't want to tell her when her mother was finally getting better. Even if her recovery was sudden, miraculously, they waited at least a day's drive to tell her. You know what June's father never really tells her? It'll be okay. I'm not asking him to say that her mother will get better. We never get that information because this movie is incompetent, but it'll be okay. That's something that a parent needs to say, whether or not it's just a scare or a done deal. The father is such a non-presence in this story that ironically, it makes him surprisingly hateable. A part of the reason for this is that the pacing is terrible. You wanna guess how long it's been since June's mother went to the hospital before her father sends her away to math camp? You have to guess, because the movie doesn't tell you. It could be two weeks or two years for all you know. How long are you going away? Now that just depends. How fucking awful June's father also depends. It depends on how long this has been going on for. Two weeks? Give the kids some time to grieve. Two years? Then yeah, it's time to start moving on. You know what the animators could have done in two minutes? Adding a some months later to the bottom of the screen. Here's how the movie tells you how long it's been. In the scene where June's mother is riding away, it's winter because the trees have no leaves. And it's about half a year later when June gets sent to math camp at the start of the summer. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of viewers actually missed this. We're not doing Kubrick here. This is not something that should be that subtle because time changes the context of how natural June's behavior is. Depending on when it happens, June's angry outburst could be a sign of normal grieving or it could be a sign of deeper trauma that she hasn't been able to heal. The pacing of this movie is just garbage. Darkness, it's still there. Maybe it'll never really fully go away. Yeah, fuck you too. This line here. This line makes me absolutely know definitively that this movie was planned with the mother being dead all the way through. Because it literally makes no sense. It doesn't work when the thing that caused the darkness, her mother's illness, actually goes away in the end. This movie gets compared a lot to Inside Out as a ripoff, but this would be like if Inside Out's resolution was that Riley got to go back to her old hometown and everything was exactly the way that she wanted it to be. I'll sum up the problem as simply as I can. June's mother being alive means that phone calls, visitation, keeping up on social media were all options. It means that someone here should have noticed the changes in June's behavior. It means that all these people were hardly communicating with a dying family member. It means despite the grief and the worry and June showing signs of mental illness, the family didn't care enough to update June about her mother's health, even when she was starting to get better. This is probably why they don't tell us what the disease is, because no disease actually works like this except forced drama soap opera disease. Her mother being alive means that the movie was talking at its ass about the darkness still being there. No, mom is perfectly healthy, almost like she was never sick in the first place. It means that June was putting the memories of someone who was alive in a box. June's mother being dead means that the film isn't hampered with any of this. It means that June is having trouble to adjusting to her life never being the same. It means that it's not going to get better. It might get easier, but nothing will actually fix the problem. It means that dear old dad there has more of an excuse to be a little bit hands off. It means putting memories in a box is a little bit more understandable. And it means that yes, that darkness will always be there to give the benefit of the doubt. It is possible to make this movie work and keep June's mother alive. But June has to lose something, something permanent. The scene where June's aunt and uncle come over established nothing, because once again, the pacing of this movie is garbage. In that time, we can establish the holidays and the birthdays they've missed, the accomplishments at school that go unappreciated, or dealing with difficulties in life that June's mother can't help with. And this time could also be used to showcase June's worsening mental health. In one scene, she's sad and grieving and has an angry outburst. In the very next scene, it's implied that June has developed obsessive compulsive disorder. She has thoughts like, if I don't do this thing for my dad, he will die. Look, I just know I need to be home this summer to take care of you. Really? This expires in three days. You're cutting it way too close. Oh no! I can't leave him alone for an entire summer. He knows he can't function without me. Look at this. Miss you. It's like a cry for help. It's not exactly unnatural. OCD can develop as a response to trauma and grief, but it'd feel a lot less unnatural if the movie was paced properly. It's an hour and 20 minutes long, not including credits. For the first 15 minutes, we have Phineas and Ferb roller coaster shenanigans. Then mom gets not cancer. 
and for the next 15 minutes, June is grieving. The ending is another 10 minutes, so we've got 40 minutes in the Wonderland itself. That's 40 minutes to establish a colorful cast of characters, save June's mental world, have lots of quirky shenanigans, and talk about mental health. That's barely enough time to do one of those things, let alone all of them. The extra characters are hit the worst, because for a lot of the movie, June is alone in Wonderland. None of the supporting cast really has much of a personality. There's Boomer, the narcoleptic bear, who I only remember because he's named Boomer. There's also this hedgehog that has a crush on a warthog, who I only remember because he's voiced by John Oliver. And then there's the warthog, who I only remembered because they called her the glue who held Wonder Park together, despite the fact that she does nothing in the entire movie. I only barely mention them because they're really an afterthought. While we're worrying about dying mom, they're making jokes about stabbing each other with porcupine needles or falling asleep outside of hibernation. The only one that actually contributes anything to the plot is the chimpanzee, Peanut. But you're alone. Where nothing can hurt me. Well, you can't mm -hmm. stay in here forever. Says who? <laughs> it's a metaphor, you get it? I fucking hate this movie. In this scene, 20 minutes after June gets to Wonderland, she learns that she was responsible for the darkness. Two minutes later, June reveals this to the others because she's an idiot. It wasn't on purpose. I was afraid. The darkness took over and I, I tried, but... That is truly some beautiful dialogue spoken with masterful conviction. Trust me, Trust we can you. bring the... We've been trusting you. But if we knew you were the person responsible for all this... So, Wonderland is just a, a, a figment of your imagination? Something like that. And, uh, l let me guess. That means we're all figments of your imagination. I mean, normally I'd be pissed that we're doing this stupid plot-mandated friendship failure, but for fuck's sake! I've taken shits longer than you two have known each other. It was so totally worth it having roller coaster antics that didn't go anywhere, instead of taking the time to develop any of these characters. And then immediately after that, June gets her confidence to fix the park because that's how grief works. In the real world, we have so many redundant scenes that either go nowhere or are redundant. June building the real roller coaster could have been cut or truncated. We did not need the scene with her aunt or uncle. And we certainly didn't need to have June take the bus to math camp. There's no reason that June couldn't have just fallen into a box and ended up here. I mean, it makes a lot more sense than just finding some random ride in the middle of the woods. And when we finally do get to Wonderland, things go bing, 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 plot point, plot point, location, location, without giving anything time to sink in. Either this movie should have been half an hour longer, or the team should have focused on making one movie instead of two, because it's not one movie. Wonder Park is a mediocre kids film about an uninteresting protagonist going to an uninteresting magical world and meeting uninteresting side characters, like we've seen done better time and time again, without massive pacing issues. Wonder Park is also a movie that tries to teach kids about grief, and how the loss of a loved one and the trauma surrounding it can affect someone, but is so poorly paced and cowardly it destroys everything that it tries to do. If you wanted to make this another fantasy world film, you needed to get to the point faster and have June's trials actually make sense. Take Spirited Away, another movie about a girl going to a wonderland. At the start of the movie, Chihiro is a whiner, but through her trials in the bathhouse, she becomes stronger and more self-reliant, because she's willing to do difficult tasks for the people that she loves. June enters her wonderland full of grief, but the things that she needs to do to solve the problem have nothing to do with overcoming grief. June just realizes, Oh, my grief is doing this? I'd better get things together! Which, I, I, I mean, I guess, yes. That is the basic way of dealing with grief, getting things together. But there's a little bit more to it than just do it. I hear it's a bit of a cliche complaint right now, but I do think this movie would have been better if it just dropped the fantasy world altogether. We have animated films these days that prove you can do something that's more down to earth. Not every animated movie needs to have these fantastical elements. They hurt way more than they help here. And as such, Wonder Park is a movie that's at odds with itself in more ways than one. I mean, it's not the most awful thing in the world. But this one hurts, because it could have been something really special. It's one of the biggest reasons that movies like Encanto or Turning Red have been well received. When they want to talk about something like generational trauma, or the loss of a loved one, or existential angst, they might not be perfect in doing it, but they are willing to go all the way. This film had a setup with a lot of potential, but the last minute happy ending ruins any payoff it could have had. Even beyond that, it was weighed down by forgettable characters, pacing problems, and a story derivative of much better works. If you want to tell a difficult story, tell the fucking story. Don't back out at the last minute. Even if things flop in the end, it's infinitely more respectable than whatever they did here. <laughs> <laughs>